Republicans, just like Democrats, have to listen to what people are saying. They have to pay attention to the folks in this room when they say, we don't want you to spend more than we give you, and we don't want to give you any more to spend. They have to listen when folks like the people in this room say, every dollar we earn is precious to us. We're not giving it to you to waste. They have to listen, just like the Democrats. When people in this room say, we can take care of ourselves, we are not interested in a nanny state, we don't want you in our homes, we don't want you in our doctor's office, we don't want you in our automobiles, we want you in your place, sticking to your constitutional assignment and allowing us to run our own lives. If you give us back our money, we can do just fine taking care of ourselves. I think it'll be a good year for, for conservatives in Michigan in 2010, and I think you'll even see some Democrats who turn conservative in 2010 seeing this way. So I think it'll be a good, job, a good year for conservatives in 2010, a good year for people who understand the limits of government, who, who respect the rule of law, and who worship the Constitution. I think we will have a good year in Michigan and at the national level. And I think the liberals will pay a steep price, which is why they are working so hard to get their agenda in place between now and the election. That's the bad news, because they still got a year to do all sorts of damage. And you can expect them to do as much as they can get away with, unless you keep putting on the pressure. Democrats themselves are worried about a bloodbath in 2010. Report out today that five Democrats, Democratic representatives, elected from previously conservative di districts over the last two election cycles, are retiring because they know the voters are going to make them pay a price for what they've done in Congress. Now you would think that would be motivation enough not to do these things, but they're so loyal to the party, so loyal to the leadership, that they're pulling ahead with this, even though they know it's going to cost them their job. I believe, and I would have never said this a month ago, that the, that the House of Representatives is in play. That it's possible Democrats could lose control of the House of Representatives as people across this country go out and cast votes against Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. I'm not sure. There was a, a state how a state senate race in Kentucky last week in my home state, a Democratic district, a lot of money poured, it was an open seat, a uh, lot of money poured into the race, uh, something in the order of a million dollars in a state senate race in, a, in, in not the most prosperous state in the world, uh, drew Latin national money. Republican candidate didn't talk about local issues at all. He ran against Pelosi, he ran against Reid, he ran against Obama, he was outspent three to one, and he won in a landslide. That's a lesson. That's a lesson for political hopefuls in Michigan who want to bring this state back to where it should be. It'll be up to, to folks like you to get the job done. I agree with, with, uh, with Rocky. That we all, pardon? Well, we get to questions in a minute. I think it's up to folks like this, the people in this room, to vote, to work, to write checks, to be active, to be vocal, to be heard. If we're going to take the country back, as the gentleman said in the beginning, it'll be taken back by people like you. And it, it won't be easy. We go into this election saying, wow, two-thirds of the people you know, don't like these policies. We're golden. I'll tell you what, we're setting ourselves up for a big disappointment because George Soros is not going to give back this country without a fight. John Stryker 
who has brought the state legislature seat by seat over the last two election cycles is not going to get Michigan back without a fight. They will spend a lot of money to maintain control so that they can continue to see their liberal policies, their liberal wish list enacted. The only way to counter that is for people like yourselves to get out and work, to give money, to vote, to make sure you're talking to your friends, your neighbors, your relatives about what this, about what it means to live in this country and to live by the traditional values and respect for the traditional institutions that have always kept this country strong. You know, I'm constantly angry at listening to Obama cite the wonders of Europe and how wonderful things are in Europe. They got a great train system, they got great health care, they take care of their people, they spend 35% of their GDP on taxes or in welfare, and, and boy, aren't those Europeans great? And it just boils me to hear these Democratic Europhiles talk about how wonderful things are in Denmark and Sweden and, and Britain and France, etc. And I just think to myself, how many people have left Europe over the last 50 years and come here looking for opportunity, looking for, a, uh, looking for the chance to innovate, get rich, make a life, start a business, looking for that American dream. How many have come over the last 50 years looking for that? How many people have left this country to go to Europe looking to get rich, looking to start a business, looking for opportunity, looking for a great place to raise their family? We can't afford to allow these folks to destroy the things in this country that all those people who came here we're looking for. We have to fight this thing out in 2010, and we have to win. Thank you.